I tested different cube timers to see if I got faster or slower times with a certain one, and watch until the end because I actually did a nearly thousand move scramble. First up is CS timer. I'm doing an average of 50 on each timer I test, starting with CS timer. My first few solves, I was noticing the scrambles were really easy, and I was getting a bunch of 11s and 10s, but maybe that was just luck because as I did more solves, it kind of went back to my normal times, and I got a 12.99, which is just about what I average. Next up is the timer I personally use, cubing time. I did my average of 50, and I didn't notice as many easy scrambles. My average was 13.23, which is about a quarter of a second higher than on CS Timer, but maybe that's because I was distracted listening to another video. The next timer I tested was QQ Timer, and there wasn't much of a difference. And I want to use this time to remind you that I'm giving away a $10 gift card to the cubicle in celebration of hitting 1,000 subscribers. I got an average of 13.20, which is very similar to my cubing time result. After that, I used the official scrambling software used in WCA competitions, well, at least an old version of it. These scrambles were longer than all the other ones at 30 moves each, so I wanted to see if the length made a difference. And the session average was, you guessed it, 1320. Exactly. Well, the session mean was 13.22, but yeah, it seems like the scramble length doesn't really matter. And to prove that it doesn't, I generated a thousand moves scr- Oh wait, you can't do that. I generated a 999 move scramble and did it on this cube. And after I inevitably misscrambled, I started the solve. Nearly a sub 10. So overall, there wasn't much of a difference between the timers, which I should have kind of expected, but at least we did learn that scramble length doesn't really matter. Make sure to like this video and subscribe for more cubing content just like this, and I'll see you in my next video.